Software development is a process of developing software and is made up of various aspects. So one aspect is actually writing the computer code. So you'll, you'll often call this programming or coding. So this is where actually typing in the computer code into the computer. Another part of it is actually documenting this computer code. So you need to write the documentation that says what the computer does, how it does it. So this is this other people end up using your code. They can understand how it works. You've also got to test the computer code as well to make sure it works properly. You know, if you've got some specifications that you want to meet, you need to um, test that the software actually meets those specifications. You've also got to fix um, the computer code. So when you're developing it and it doesn't work, um, you'll need to fix any errors and also maintaining the computer code. So as during its life cycle, you might have to add in new features or if people report bugs to you, so you need to kind of remove these bugs and so on. So that's kind of maintaining the computer code. And then embedded software development is basically developing software that runs on embedded systems. So this is a bit different than developing software that's running on a PC because it typically involves both designing the software as well as designing and interfacing with hardware as well. So this is kind of a you know the kind of crucial aspects of embedded of an embedded system. It involves both software and hardware. So developing embedded software or any software really is typically an iterative and an incremental process. So it's iterative in the sense that basically software very rarely works the first time, you know, as you're writing it, very rarely you get it to work straight away. So this initial version you develop, you know, very likely contain many errors that become apparent when you start testing. So this is what involves what we call debugging. So this is where they have to go back through your code, find these errors and fix them in this next iteration. So it is this kind of iterative process. So once you've fixed those errors, you know, you'll test it again, and then there might still be some errors remaining, or there could even be new errors. So it means every iteration, you need to test, find any errors, repeat, and just keep doing this again and again until this, you've, you've removed all the errors that you've found and the software works as intended. And it's incremental in the fact that we typically add features one at a time. So you don't try and just develop the whole thing in one go. So you break down the actual development into e into kind of these manageable parts. So you implement each one in turn. So it's just easier because it means you can test each feature individually. So you can develop a particular feature, test it. When you know that's working, you can then add in the next feature, test that. When you know that's working, add a new new feature. And so you keep you know building this up incrementally. And it's, it's just a better way of working because it means that you can, um, you know, when you find errors, you, you know you've got a better idea where those errors are located. Because if you just write, say, a thousand lines of code in one go, you'll find lots of errors and they could be anywhere within this code. But if you test a small feature, that works. Right, I know that's fine. You go on to the next part and then there you've got errors. You know that they're going to be in this new part that you've just developed. So the first stage of software is the initial planning stage. So this is where you got your specification, you find out maybe from your boss or whatever tells you what software it is you need to develop. So you do your initial planning and you jump into this kind of development cycle. So you can see this is a circle what um you know keeps looping round. So after you've done your planning, you can then design the software again. This design the software. Then you have to implement the code. So this is where you write the code. You compile the code, and you can once you compile the code, you can either upload it onto your microcontroller or it's on a desktop PC. You can run it. And you can test the code. Then when you're testing it, you're basically evaluating whether it meets your specification. You know, if it doesn't, you'll find some errors somewhere. What prevents it from doing that? So then you'll be de debugging the errors. Then you have to go. You know, so that's kind of we've done one cycle. But when you get to this part and you find there, you have to, you know, you have to go back around again, unfortunately. 
So debugging, you might have to replan, find a better way of doing it and go around again, redesign that part of the software, re-implement that code, retest it, re-evaluate it, and you just keep going, you know, around and around this loop. <clears throat> you know, it can be many, many times you go around this loop, and finally, you'll evaluate it and you'll find that it works as you intended, and then you can drop out of it, and you can go to the deployment then, so you know your software works as in intended. So it's actually only these two stages what actually involves writing the code. So actually typing code into the keyboard is actually one of these two points when you're actually implementing the code and then when you're kind of debugging. You know, these are the actual only two parts where you're actually directly working with the code. So actually, a lot of people just think the actual writing the code is the main part of the software, but it's actually the smallest, it's only a very small part of developing the software. So testing and fixing errors, so we call debugging. This takes up the majority of development time. You can find lots of quotes on the internet. You know, people, it's, you often see this 90% figure uh, quoted. You know, 90% of your time will be spent fixing uh, code. So it is extremely time consuming. Again, you'll hear lots of stories where people have to spend hours and hours or days even trying to find errors with the code. And that's as part of the software development process. Unfortunately, the actual writing the key, writing the code on the keypad is only actual, you know, the very small part. Actually, to find the errors, fix them, and get it to work properly is this main part. And it does, it requires patience, determination, and resilience. We often see in novice programmers just kind of give up. They'll go around the software development cycle once, they'll find it doesn't work, then they immediately kind of trying to get help off some, you know, to somebody, versus somebody else to come and fix it for them. You know, it does require resilience. You might have to be going around this loop many times until you get it to work. There's no shortcuts, unfortunately. It's just the way it is. You know, because fixing errors is part and parcel of being a programmer. You know, and all programmers make mistakes. Even if you've been prog programmer for many years, many decades, you'll still make mistakes. You know, and it's learning to fix them. So making mistakes isn't a problem. Making errors in your code is not a problem. You know, as long as you learn to fix them, that's the main part. So there's a couple of quotes here. So the first one is, is from Professor Sir Maurice Wilkes, so extremely eminent computer scientist. So he's he's talking about when they, you know, when they first kind of invented, you can see he invented the words, world's first store program computer. So in 1949, as soon as we started programming, we found to our surprise that it wasn't as easy to get programs right as we had thought. Debugging had to be discovered. I can remember the exact instant when I realised that a large part of my life from then on was going to be spent in finding mistakes in my own programs. And this sums it up very nicely. You know, actual, At that point, they didn't realise. They thought, we're just going to write. We've developed these computers we can program. We'll write a program, we'll run it, it'll be fine. But it's just not like that. The programs don't always work as you expect. And you have to debug, you know, and it will, you know, take up a large part of this part is finding errors and fixing them. That's perfectly natural part of the software development cycle. And there's another very useful quote to keep in your mind. So this is from Richard Pattis, is from the University of California. Department of Computer Science. So when debugging, novices insert corrective code, experts remove defective code. So again, this is a very, um, very apt quote to kind of keep in your mind when you're writing software, because it can be very annoying. You spent lots of time writing some software, and you find it doesn't work. So you think, I'm not, it's going to carry on. You don't want to waste all this time you spent writing the software. So you just carry on. You keep adding more and more lines of code to try to get it to work. And, you know, that might, it might not fix it, so you keep adding more and more. And it's sometimes it, you, you might end up getting it working if you carry on doing that. So, you know, even if it doesn't, it does end up working, you'll look back at the code, it'll be very long, very poorly implemented, difficult to read, maintain, and expand. Because, you know, often the best approach is just to call it quits delete the code and start again, just try a different approach. 
see it's in, well this quote sums it up very nicely so at the beginning it can be hard to have that mindset you think i've spent lots of time writing this i'm not going to waste my time by deleting all this code i've just typed out i'm going to try and fix it by adding more in that's most cases that's the wrong approach you better to think right this code doesn't work i can't get this to work i'm, I'm trying i'm you know i'm trying to implement it the wrong way i'm just going to delete it and start again and try a different approach that is often um, the best course of action and you shouldn't be afraid to do it